Bobber's ready. Go! Travis spoken. Boss and Rob and Amber are going to do it. This is a, a business trip, as I like to say. You, Brad Culpepper. I'm tired of you and the fucking chickens. You can come with a puppet master. They're going to be my little puppets. It's not like you're making me deal with the devil here. You get to milk your own milk, I guess. We got enough rocks here, too. We could build a pretty decent shelter just using rocks. I'm supposed to talk with you. Direct from Hobart, it's time for the only survival podcast in Australia dedicated to Survivor. Bring you today's interviews, episodes, and opinions from the greatest reality show on the planet. It's Survivor Odds, and here's your host. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Survivor Odds, Australia's number one TV and film. Oh, I hate saying that. Uh, ben always says that, but, um, Apparently, we made it first at some point, so there you go. We're number one. Uh, we're back for another Oslet show, I guess you could say this is. Um, there's Oslets, and it's a show, so Oslet show is a pretty apt title, um, which is the first one out of Korong, so we are going to be continuing these slightly, uh, maybe not weekly, but if we've got something we feel like we really want to talk about, then we'll do the episode. Um, and I feel like we do have something pretty important to talk about because uh, today we're discussing Australian Survivor uh, 2016, not the uh, early, what was it, 2002 version. Um, oh, good oh, that's thinking. why I'm here. I thought we were talking uh, about the old one. Oh, I mean, I was all hang up now. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're talking about uh, Celebrity Survivor hosted by Dicko. Um <laughs> Yeah, everyone's favourite Survivor season. Uh, no, but we're talking about Australian Survivor. Uh, there's been a lot of news regarding it since um, we last did an episode, which was, what, November last year? October, maybe? Um, yeah, November, around <laughs> November 20th. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's when it was announced, so I'm, I'm assuming it was that date. Yeah, so, sometime that's then. A- but it's been a while, so there's a lot of news that we need to cover. Um so I'll be, I'm joined t- today by three different Auslets. All have one thing in common. They're all Australian, because um, this is Australian Survivor. Um, we're not just being racist against Americans, but I feel like this is our time to shine with the Australians. Uh, so there's four of us on here talking about our upcoming series. Um, all the way from Melbourne, it is everyone's favourite former drunk, Cable Brandon. Cable, welcome <laughs> Oh, thanks for the intro. Thanks, I really like that one. Yeah, um, yeah, I'm excited to the show. Yeah, yeah. So I'm looking forward to chatting to firstly uh, yourself and Ryan and Julian about all things Australian Survivor because there's a lot of interesting ideas they've come up with or interesting things that I'd like to hear. I, I am I'm actually more interested to hear what you guys sort of think about it. To be honest, so I'll put forward a few ideas as well and we'll see what happens we should also point out that um as you can probably gather by now uh none of us made it on to the show uh, <laughs> so we're all doing an episode talking about well, the actually show, never it's actually applying. i lied i think i, was yeah, I didn't apply. I said i was applying but i never did <laughs> Yeah, I didn't. Um, but it is filming right now, so we're definitely not on it. But you will notice that Ben's not on the episode, so... <laughs> yeah. Uh, but you just heard his voice. It's Julian, uh, everyone's oh. favourite flight attendant. Welcome back to the show, Julian. Yes, I should um, have tried to be somehow incorporate that into flying to Samoa right now and, um, yeah. yeah, maybe getting lost in the jungle. And, you know... I've always thought it would be so cool. This is a bit of a random tangent, but imagine just like being there and sort of sneaking on set while they're filming it. Um, yeah, I yeah. wish I organised it better so I could have went over there. Uh, Timed our holiday for uh, May 2016 in Samoa. Um, yeah, yeah so maybe there. next year we can all organise something if there's a season well, two. I'm hoping, yeah, I literally just got my flight attendant job, as you mentioned, and so that probably why I didn't apply, but I'm hoping it's popular and that they do another season if it's good. But this is all depending how this format goes, which we'll talk about. But, yeah, very excited to talk about it with you guys. Can I just, I'd like to say I think that's a good idea that you brought up now. I think if if there is a second season, I think we should all just crash Ponderosa. <laughs> Don't worry about applying. Just rock up and just be at Ponderosa. <laughs> 
Well, um, hopefully the season films in Denmark. Otherwise, I'll you guys will have to take video of it because I won't be available in May 2017. Uh-huh. But um, we'll see if we even get a season two. And the third Oslo joining us, it's everyone's favorite favorite Adelaidean, if that's a word. Ryan Brink, Ryan, welcome back. No, it's really exciting to be here now. I feel like I'm kind of under here under false pretenses. I was hoping this was the podcast about MILFs versus GILFs, but it's okay. <laughs> well, Everyone's well, favourite upcoming Survivor season. Okay, maybe we'll have to talk about that next time. Uh, GILF is in well, grammar. We're doing, we're doing a whole episode on MILFs versus GILFs. Um, uh, so, Colin, if you're listening to that, get planning. Um, start your fantasy casting. Um, but, yeah, Ryan, you been a while since you've been on the show as well. Yeah, I think uh, probably about mid-season, Cable and I did an episode of the Oz, uh, Ozlet show. So yeah, excited to be back. But yeah, it, it, I'm really excited to talk about Australian Survivor because they're now filming and there's been so much since the last time we spoke. So yeah, let's break this down. Yeah, we're well and truly into the off-season and um, I feel like this off-season is different to all because normally off-season's like, eh... We're going to rewatch Borneo again, but this we've got a lot to talk about, and there's only going to be more and more news coming out over the next few months, so it's super exciting. Um, so let's get into it. Uh, I've got a list of all the different stuff here um, that we've learnt over the past few months, but I feel like the number one talking point, the number one discussion that everyone's been, uh, what it's probably been two months, three months since we found out. It's been a while. And that is the host of Australian Survivor. And no, it is not Rove. Thank God. No, it's not Hamish Blake. No, it's not Dr. Vet Guy. It's not any of them. The host is uh, ha- hashtag blindside on the screen, Jonathan LaPaglia, um, who I'm ashamed to admit I didn't know who he was. Uh, <laughs> pre announcement. Uh, very embarrassed. Uh, I think Colin knew who he was, and he's not even Australian. Um, although he he is a Hollywood actor, Jonathan LaPaglia. So, um, yeah, uh, but yeah, I did know. I do recognise his face a bit. Maybe that's because he looks like Jeff Probes. Who knows? Um, <laughs> I've got a lot of thoughts on old Jono here, uh, which I'll hear your guys. But just to summarise, my thoughts is. I like this decision, um, and I'll elaborate that on a bit in a bit. But Ryan, old John Lapalia is our new host. Yeah, I actually don't mind it. I think it's a really good choice. I know very early on, I wrote a top ten for like potential hosts, and I really just based it on rumors that we've been hearing through News Limited and other outlets like that. And I guess one of the people who came up was Alex O'Loughlin from Hawaii Five O. So I guess it wasn't too big of a surprise that they decided to go for an actor. But yeah, Jonathan LaPaglia, I think he's like, like we said, he's got the look. He, I don't know. He just seems to come across as like someone who could be a good host. So yeah, I, I'm excited by the decision. Uh, but I still want to see like what he does at that first tribal council. I want to see what kind of, Jeffisms he uses or doesn't use, and I still feel like it has to be his, has to be our own show, and he has to kind of make his own mark. But yeah, it's going to be interesting. What I like about it is that it's not from that list that you wrote, or from the list uh, that other people were talking about yeah, that we were 100%. all discussing in that first episode. That's what I love because it was, like you said, maybe not the most biggest shock ever, but. A lot of people were expecting like a network ten person. Can I just say thank it's God it's not Grant yeah. Tenya? Thank God it's not. Grant oh Tenya. yes, I, I would not watch the show uh, if it was him, and that's not an exaggeration at all. Um, but yeah, I just love that it was so left field in a way, and that they really they're not making this the big flashy show of I'm a celebrity or anything like that. They went for this uh, the person they thought they would uh, would do a good job rather than. To, the network 10 personalities or anything like that. Um, but Julian, it's not Grant Daniel. <laughs> yeah, I, I think that's true. I agree with that. And I agree that I am sort of pleasantly surprised. I was at first, I was like, what the fuck? Cause I didn't know who he was, but I think it allows him to sort of make his own mark. And it's kind of good that most people won't know him really either. Most of the audience, cause it, they don't have a preconceived idea of what he should or what he will already be like. So that allows him to start it, you know, they'll be introduced to him 
fresh from the start and there's no sort of disconnect there. So I think that's a really good thing. I am a little bit worried though because, you know, it's a very tough role. So I'd be worried for anyone doing this job. But he said, oh, I'm so nervous in a couple of interviews. and He's so um, humble. Oh, Jono. Yeah, he does seem pretty down to earth. And I, I think he's got the good look, like the right look. I think he's the right age. He's not too fresh. Like he's a little bit rugged looking. He's a little bit... He's not too fresh-faced and young, so he's he's that right. I think it says here it's 46. Um, yeah, a bit of life experience, done a few different things before as an actor. It's going to be interesting, but I, I think he um, could be really good. I, I hope he just makes his own mark. Um, but, yeah, it'll be very interesting. I'm, I'm pleasantly surprised. So who pulls off the island look better, Julian? Jeff Probst or... Jonathan Lapone. Oh, it's got to be probes. You have to, you can't, yeah, you can't really diss probes, can you? Well, at least Jonathan Lapalia doesn't have Botox, I don't think. Um, <laughs> hello, Jeff, if you're listening to the show, which you're not. Um, Cable, <laughs> uh, I think you were a fan of this choice, weren't you? Uh, maybe I'm just making that up, putting words No, in no, I, I think I've gone on the record as saying I'm pretty happy with this choice. Um, unlike uh, yourself, I... I knew a, a, a bit about uh, Jonathan. Obviously, you know, his brother's a little bit more famous um, doing stuff in Hollywood and Australia. And um, I, to be honest, I was the one thing I was surprised, I didn't realise how much stuff he'd actually done in the States. Um, but I knew... He's got a big you know, resume. Yeah, I, I knew... He, look, to be honest, I you know, I wouldn't say I'm his autobiographer by any stretch of the imagination, but, um, you know, I'm a fan of the Underbelly series and he played one of the main villains um, in one of those series. And... Um, and he's obviously in Love Child. He's, I think, in season two. I've seen some adverts for that. So, I mean, he's been around. I mean, he hasn't really starred anything apart from maybe, you know, being, the, you know, in that season of Underbelly as the main character or the main villain. Um, so this will be – probably doing this is going to be – I can understand why he'd probably be nervous because there's there's a lot of pressure on him, man, and it is a pretty, pretty big gig to get. Um, you know, there will be a lot of eyes on him to see how he stacks up. So – um, yeah, whereas uh, I think a lot of other roles he's had, he's never been um, the main star. He's always been a bit player in, in something else. So, um, you know, like Ryan touched on too, I was happy, you know, they sort of went outside that list or, or got someone that we weren't really expecting. Um, and they obviously knew what they wanted by sort of looking at someone that's had an acting career as well. So, um, and I think he's, he he would have a good mix, a bit like Jeff, that he could interview someone, he can be sort of serious and stern in one, one breath and uh, uh, sort of tribal and then be a bit more um, laid back in other times. So um, whereas like we, I think we argued that Rove probably would – no one would take him seriously because he is a comedian. So I, th- I, think, I think he's got a good mix and, and he seems to look like he's – Got that rugged kind of look like a Jeff Probes. He looks like he could be a, you know, a um, Bear Grylls type as well. Like uh, he doesn't look like he's, you know, the, you know, one of those people that sits in the makeup chair before he goes on stage kind of thing. So um, I don't know. I'm I'm just really happy. But having said all that, I mean, you know, the Channel Nine Lincoln House was the surprise. <laughs> announcement for the first ever season so saw how that sort of panned out um going back not to keep going on too much but i think uh something julian touched on um it'd be interesting to see what sort of that first tribal council um how he's going to sort of compare or or how he's going to try and make it his own character um we've seen photos with him with jeff probes he's obviously got a lot of notes and apparently he's got Jeff on speed dial and Jeff's willing to help and all that sort of stuff. But I just wonder how much or, or, you know, some of those famous lines that Jeff uses, like the tribe has spoken and all that sort of stuff, whether that's allowed to be used or not. Because I know, again, the first ever uh, Australian survivor, um, Lincoln Howes, was told that there were certain phrases he could not use, um, very much things that Jeff probes had used. So I'm not too sure how much you know, how hamstrung he's going to be with stuff like that. So that'll be interesting as well. So okay. Can I say something quickly? I, yeah. I just yeah. I just implore everyone, and I, this is going to be really difficult because I don't want to ever to listen to the fan base when we're watching this, and I can already hear it. I can already hear, you know, I hate to use the word casuals, but, you know, casual fans of Survivor being like, oh, it's not like the American version. They don't say the tribe has spoken or all this stuff. And I just hope that people 
that watch this go in straight away with an open mind that it's not going to be exactly like yeah. the American version. Because if you are always going to be comparing it, you'll never enjoy it. Like, so If you don't go just, in with an open mind, you're going to hate it from the first episode. Um, exactly, yeah. It, it may be total shit, but we do have to at least acknowledge it that it's not going to be exactly the same. But, um, yeah, but don't you think inherently that's unfortunate, even though us four can say that and you want to s- sit back and, and judge it for what it is, don't we inherently still generally as a – in general – um, we still judge it and compare it against something yeah. that is so it's good. Natural. I mean, yeah. I mean, there's no way, like even say you look at say like the prequels, the Star Wars prequel movies, whether they're shit or not. I mean, the problem is, you know, we compare them against the original trilogy. Yeah. And I don't know. I just think I like to think I'm going to try and go in neutral, but you still, we're going to still analyze it, and and there's going to be things that we don't like about it because it's not. You know, it's not the same as the American version, yeah. unfortunately. It's funny you say that because, like, I guess right now we're seeing that in the UK they've got brand new Top Gear. I don't know how many guys watch Top Gear, but brand new hosts, brand new people, and like straight away, like the first episode was pretty average, but the straight away the negative mindset towards the show is like, this is shit. We don't want to watch it. Bring back the old people, and I think that's a similar model to what we might see in Australia, where people will just judge a late Julian saying, but Julian's right. We have to just. Treat it for what it is. This is not going to be US yeah. Survivor. This is Australian Survivor. They've, the producers have already come out and spoken about how one of the central themes of this season is going to be about mateship, which is you know a little bit different to yeah. probably what we'll we talk about. That. So, yeah, it's interesting. Um, yeah, I feel like... But on the flip side, I do feel like a lot of these viewers are um, people who stopped watching Survivor in Season 9, Season 10... This is not just going to be the same. The figures are not going to be the exact same numbers that Go gets. There's going to be a lot of viewers who are returning to Survivor because of this, um, mm. which might help it out that they haven't seen the latest Survivors and everything like that. On the yeah, side also... of that, it's not going to help that Go is airing Millennials versus Gen X at the same time as it's seen. Mm. I think Sorry, what they've Julia. tried to make a point of as well, like even though... It is going to be its own unique flavor. I mean, we're going to talk about the differences in the format. But they've said, oh, it's going to be the same quality and standard of filming and production as the American version. So at least we they've, they've made that point several times, the, the media or Channel 10 has. So at least we can be confident that it's going to be up to standard or at least we can expect it to be up to standard. But, but yeah, like there's uh, – I, I, I just guess I – worry about people whinging about stuff that of course it's going to be different about like hosting differences like you can't replace jeff so of course don't even like you know you know what i mean like don't even start like oh he's not as good as jeff because he probably won't be like he's not jeff and so yeah he's not jeff so you Plus, kind of shouldn't we to... be comparing borneo jeff with australian survivor 2016 jonathan and that's a good Napoleon. point yeah that's a good point too like, so. he's got 12, no, not 12 years. He's got 16 years' experience doing this, and we've grown accustomed to him. Um, he, it's going to be a bit rocky to start out with. So you mentioned that that first tribal is going to be the decider, but I think even then we can probably look at the beginning of the season and the end of the season and say, yeah. well, yeah, he did get a bit better in the end. Um, yeah. Well, I guess... Just- you go. Just on that point, I think, yeah, you can't just watch that first tribal. Like, it's going to be interesting. We're going to pick it apart anyway. But I think you have to give him the whole season and see how he evolves and gets more comfortable. Because I rewatched The Australian Survivor, which is, I'm probably one of the only people ever to rewatch it. But I know Lincoln Howe has got a lot of grief. But in fairness to him, he that wasn't a role he was built for. He got thrown into it by Channel 9 because he was already contracted and, long story short, they want to save money. But if you actually watch that season, he's uncomfortable at the start, but once, sort of after a few episodes, you can actually see he's really comfortable and he really gets into it. And he's actually really quite good by the end. But um, So I think we have to uh, judge well, him at the end of the season. Same thing with Grant well. Bowler yeah. in the mole as well. like. Point. You look at early Grand Bowler, and then you look at like uh, Australians' uh, Amazing Race Grand Bowler, and there's a huge difference. Um, it's plus Jonathan Lapalier is not a host. That's the other thing. They didn't hire a host; they hired an actor. Um, so it's going to take some time. Um, but just to jump back uh, to 
I think we were talking about the catchphrases and stuff. I think uh, the tribe has spoken will be in there. Um, but but the thing is, not all of the Jeff uh, Jeffisms are going to be there. The theme song it might not be there. All these little things it might not be there. And yeah, we like those things. But to me, it comes down to the cast, what the stories that they tell, and what happens during during the season. And partly the host. I'm not focusing too much on... I would love it for the main ancient voices to be there and all that, which I think it is, right? Uh, I'm not sure if that's 100% confirmed. But oh, I thought the, I'd heard different, but, I mean, you might have heard something else. Um, too sure. No, I think I'm just thinking when they had that preview and they played it in the preview. Oh, Maybe yeah. that's what I'm thinking of. So we but don't know for sure. were, Yeah, but even then, they weren't, pay, they weren't playing a whole lot of it either, though. It was more the actual... Just the, voice, the yeah, it was more that it wasn't so much the actual whole theme as an entire sort of track. But look, I don't know. I I'd heard somewhere recently that they there was talk that no, we wouldn't be getting the music because that's Ross, um, Russ uh, Lando and uh, uh, who's the other guy? Um, David Van Vanicor. Yeah, Dave yeah. Vanicor. So um, that's hard to know. It, yeah. Anyway, we'll continue on. Sorry, Noel, but um, um, yeah, no, I just heard a, heard a whisper that, that we probably would be having our own original uh, music. I'm, yeah. If it's good, I'm not too phased. It's nice to have ancient voices. I think there's way more things to be more worried about. That's just my opinion. Um, uh, even the in in show music, it would be nice to have our old favorite songs. But if they can get a good soundtrack, then I'm fine. It just needs to sound good. Um, doesn't matter if it's different, if it's good. Um, but just to kind of cap it on old Jono, uh, I'm calling him Jono. I don't think anyone calls him that, but that's what I'm going to be called. It's easier than Jonathan LaPaglia. Um, it's very I Aussie. Think, yeah, Jono. <laughs> I think we touched on it, the Tribal Council, not necessarily the first one, but I think Tribal Council is key Um Anyone can say 39 days um, or 55 days. We'll get to that. Um, one survivor. And anyone can narrate a channel. Not anyone, but you get the point. To me, it comes down to the tribal council. If you can dig into these contestants, not give too much away, um, get them to open up and really interrogate them. Because that's the problem with the Lincolns and other uh, international versions is... At the tribal councils, they would just say, so, did you build a fire this week? Did you do this? Are you feeling tired? And they never dig into that next level. So I think it comes down to the tribal council more than anything with Jono. Um, mm. But I'm confident in him. He may turn out to be a horrible host, but I'm very much happy about this choice. Um, and, yeah, I'm confident that he hopefully will do a good job. Um Anything more to add on Jonathan or, or Jono, or shall we move on? Um, oh, just to go on what you were just saying too, I think we have to give him the whole season to let him find his feet as well. Um, because the, let's let's be honest, Jeff has developed his skill over the 32 years, or sorry, 32 seasons of Survivor. Like, going on what you just said, like, like Jeff wasn't fantastic in those first two seasons. Really, when you think about it, or if you go, ever look back, he asked the, oh, how how was it finding water, and how you like you just said, it, you know, some of the questions are pretty blah in comparison to what he he sort of delves up these days. So, um, I think we just got to give him opportunity. And he didn't have the luxury of talking to Jeff Probes before he uh, filmed his season, old Jeff. So only in the Jonathan's, narrow. yeah, <laughs> John has heard from the master. Um, yeah. Let's move on. We talked about how they're filming it right at this moment. Um, <coughs> there was a lot of speculation about the location. We talked about what location we would all like. Samoa is the location, um, which is kind of cool, yeah, but I'm not jumping up and down. It's a standard. It's probably the most standard survivor location you could ever get. It's just it's Samoa. It's where there's the beaches and there's the palm trees and there's the blue water. Um, so it, I'm glad it's not like the first season where they filmed it in, what, Adelaide or something, which was just 
at a campground or something like that. Um, that yeah, the on the coast. Into, uh, yeah. Ryan, is that <laughs> near, like, yeah. where it was filmed, Ryan? Is that anywhere yeah, near where you... Look, I live in Adelaide. It's about probably seven and a half hours away. They filmed it near Port Lincoln, so yeah, yeah it's it's a bit it's a bit yeah. away from where Whalers I'm, Way, yeah. Air Peninsula. Yeah, it's a bit away, but I, I must first. say though, like in defence of that, like I actually thought that was really cool because I thought, oh, so wild, and but it just was a bit too cold and harsh, like yeah. in terms of you know you think of the exotic, but um, yeah, that's a tangent, but. It was yes. cool to see the... Samoa, uh, I think, is something that I'm not overly excited about, but I think there could have been a lot worse decisions, and I'm fine with it. I wouldn't want every season to be in Samoa, but I think it's a very safe option for the first uh, for their first season. What do you think, Julian? Um, yes. Yeah, I, I can't really... I was a little bit disappointed that it wasn't Borneo, like the initial rumours were That would saying. have been cool. Yeah, I was like, ah, oh, okay, it's a bit more generic, but um, look, it should look like Survivor, which I think is important, especially for them in the first season to to make that right impression. So, yeah, I, I hope it. I hope it's like a. I don't know. Like, I hope it's not the exact same beach, at least that they filmed it in the USA, isn't it? Probably will be. Um, well, they, one of they, those. They've talked beaches. about it being different beach, so. They've said oh, really? it. Yeah, it's going to be a different beach. So they that's that, good. That's a positive. <laughs> to yeah, be honest, like, I can't tell the difference between the beach. Well, no, and that's true. Like some, sometimes you can, sometimes you can't. Like I, I'm a big location person when it comes to Survivor, and so you'll hear me go on forever the fact that, well, yeah, that they don't change them up like they used to, and there's never been an inland location since Token Teens. But what was I going to say? Yeah, Samoa was good. It, I, I just hope they. I don't know, have cool rewards and integrate a little bit of the culture as well into some of the rewards and and make it sort of that whole South Pacific theme. Um, we'll see. I think Samoa also has, uh, I wouldn't say it's easy, but it's one of the less harsh locations. And we'll get to how many days this season's going to be. Um, but I think that's probably a good thing as well that it's not the most br- it's not cambodia or like guatemala or something like that um so they'll be able to sustain for 55 days hopefully um do you like samoa right look i like julian i i thought that borneo would have been a really cool place to go to but when you're thinking about it from a logistic point of view and you're thinking they're taking a round 165 locals over with them. This is the first time they've ever done like this kind of production. They're hiring 200 odd local Samoans. It, it kind of makes sense that that they would go to a location where there's a bit of infrastructure. They've got maybe some on the ground experience from the local Samoans as well. So I think from from that point of view, location to Australia as well is relatively close. Like what is it like a five six hour flight from sydney so it's pretty close it's not too far yeah so i i just think from that kind of a standpoint it kind of makes sense for them to go somewhere safe to start off with very much agree with what everyone else has said if this is a show that is successful and we have multiple seasons like i would love to see it in a more exotic location but for a first up hit i think it's a pretty safe bet to go to samoa where was the big failure film that was in fiji the big adventure uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, was, I for some saying. reason I thought it was Samoa, but no, yeah, Fiji makes yeah, sense. Um, Fiji. Which they maybe they maybe looked at Fiji, but obviously there's a season right now filming in the American version. Um, but I, if there is a season two, I wouldn't be surprised if we get Vanuatu or Fiji or something like that. Um, but uh, one thing I did, uh, what's in it? Beverly something or other, Mick something. She's apparently the... that's a bloke. <laughs> <laughs> no, no it's not because ben... I just watched a video with her. Oh, yeah. I know because Ben made a comment about Beverly could be a man's man's name. I've never heard of a <laughs> male Beverly. Talking about? There's men called Beverly. Yeah, in the first. Uh, I... Oh, I've got to go just... back and listen to that. But I yeah, you got to have to listen because Ben was like <laughs> uh, him, and you said he... no. Grievy or something. The like that. Garvey. Yeah. The Garvey. Yeah. I could totally see Ben thinking that that is a thing, though, which is totally not a thing. Um, She's yeah. way younger than I thought she was going to be. Like, I think there was yeah, a picture Beverly, of her. In... kind of an oldish name, isn't it? Um, yeah. Hello to all our 
teenagers called Beverly listening. Um, but she did say in an interview I watched that Samoa is a good location, blah, 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 blah. Um, and because we can do lots of water challenges, <laughs> which I found interesting <laughs> because uh, in the four seasons they filmed in Samoa, they didn't do water challenges hardly. Um, <laughs> they did like one per season and it was normally just like stand on the pole in the water. Um, so I don't know if they're filming in a different part of Samoa or something, but um, I thought that was always a logistical issue that they couldn't do water challenges in Samoa. Yeah, um, it's interesting. So that should be interesting. Because the whole time, um, like, maybe... leading up, they were talking about how swimming was going to be such a paramount in this. And really, like, we've yeah, seen in Samoa... Yeah, it was in, in the application. Yeah, like... like it, can you swim? Like, in Samoa, like, at the first season in season 19, like, I think they had that swing challenge where I think Jay Sala swam swimming. out, like, against... Yeah. Yeah, and, like, like that was it. Like, that was nothing. And the rest of it has been, like you said, just on poles. So it's just... It's an odd location if they want to do swimming because, yeah... Well, like, was... I, she, technically she didn't say swimming she said water so maybe it's just like swim out to the pole and then stand on the pole like mm. it, w- it will be interesting to see but cable do you like samoa as a location yeah look i'm i probably echo kind of what uh ryan sort of said i think you've got to look at it from this point of view is that w- as an Australian production, we cannot afford to pay the same sort of amounts of money that the American version can do. So, you know, we really probably have to skimp on in certain areas and and having the infrastructure, like Ryan said, already there, it just – I would have loved to have seen Borneo, but I think, you know, the American version hasn't been there since the first season and and there's probably a reason why they haven't been back – you know, X amount of dollars, um, the political climate at the time, all that sort of stuff. I'm not sure. I'm not a very big pol- Australian politics person. I'm not too sure of our relationship with Samoa, but I'm assuming we have a fairly good relationship with Samoa. Um, I know um, recently there was something from uh, the Prime Minister or someone in Samoa saying he was wrapped to have their production there and that they'd had the American versions there and they love helping out and all that sort of stuff. So I think it's a win-win and look, I just wanted it to be in a firstly a decent location, which Samoa is, and you know if it means we can be there um, and, and save a few bucks or, or get the best production values for money. I mean that's it's it it's it's a silly place not to go. Really, I mean um, I will I do have to laugh though because when the rumours were that it was a Borneo. And I was still hoping I'd get a phone call to say, would you like to be on the season? I actually went back to watch Borneo and look at the camps to see where idols can be hidden. So, I mean, what a waste of time that was. Dedication. Um, yeah, maybe in the in the Pagong Lagoon is where that yeah, was. Yeah, or the, or the mud pit, but anyway. Yeah. Uh, oh, I'd love a return from the mud pit. Um, currently in Apia, is that how you say? Apia, Samoa, it is... Sunny, partly cloudy, 25 degrees Celsius. So it's... Oh, Thursday, thunderstorm. So stay tuned for that episode and Friday. Um, <laughs> so I it can't like do it. this. It's not worth it. <laughs> yeah. um, but it looks like it, the weather's uh, pretty good for them to be playing, like, hot but not overly hot uh, with some classic survivor thunderstorms thrown in. Um, so kind of uh, going on that, we mentioned it before, this season, uh, I don't think it's breaking a survivor record, but it's definitely doing more than the American has ever done. It must be up there. 55 days uh, is how long this will be going for, which is kind of crazy. Um, I don't really have a positive or negative opinion on it, other than that it's just real shock. Um, we know that they want to do multiple episodes a week, and they've got 24 contestants. So that obviously is the explanation for it. Um, but, you know, you'd think just like they'd do 49 or something like that to stay with it. But uh, 55 is an odd number. And it's just a lot of days, um, which I'm fine with, but I worry that they're going to go really easy on the contestants. And I'm not one of those people who's like, oh, Survivor's so much easier than it used to be. Uh, because have you seen Corong? It looked like one of the most hardest things they've ever done. But I don't want them to go easy and give them like tents or anything like that and lots and lots and lots of food. So, yeah, I've got mixed feelings on this 55 days thing, Cable. Yeah, well, I was going to say, well, do you think 
the 55 days, that number represents anything in in the strain sense or because I've got no idea either, but the, like why that number, I mean, surely it has some sort of meaning potentially or are we just trying to say logistics with the uh, how many cast members they've got? Yeah. I just... Um, but in saying that, Survivor South Africa is 27 days and they have... 20 people cast so it's not like you have to vote someone out every three days or anything like that yeah um yeah i i'm when i heard 55 days i thought they've got to be kidding and um you know like i really if they had rang me and said do you want to be on the season yeah i still probably would have said yes but i even said to my partner i said 55 days is a long time and you'd have to be so mentally switched on i just you know, I think, I think I had this conversation with Ryan um, a couple of weeks ago. You know, you think of someone like um, uh, just now, oh, Rodney. Rodney in Wells Park. Obviously, he didn't win challenges in that back end of the season and he was getting really upset and um, really, you know, agitated and aggressive and stuff like that. Can you imagine someone getting to 55, 55 days and ha- haven't won a challenge or just the way the cards fall, they, they haven't won food and that? I just... I don't know how that works, really. Like, that's a long time. And then you look at Ko Rong when Ty even said something along the lines of, you know, I can do this physically, you know, the days doesn't matter. It's just the mental stuff and the paranoia and the emotional stuff. Again, I'm like, 55 days is a long, long fucking time. Yeah, they even in that Ko Rong season, they seemed so depleted towards the end. Like, the last few episodes, it was even the biggest characters were just kind of just out of it um so the only thing i can think of is they're just going to go a bit easier on these people i don't know what do you think ryan yeah i like i pretty much echo the thoughts of cable i just thought 55 days i was worried like are we jumping the shark here it's a it's a really long time 55 days i I kind of understand if they're going to go for the multi-nights and and we're hearing possibly two nights a week which is not too bad and 24 players so like I, i get why they're doing it but it just seems like a long time. Not even physically, because I think physically they can they can make it a bit easier for the contestants to get them through. But just mentally, and we've seen it, and especially this season, you're looking at players like Aubrey who breaking down, ties breaking down. The mental struggle of going through however many tribal councils. I think there's going to be what at least 21 for this season coming up. If you're someone who's going to a lot of those, that's going to be really draining. So I, I'm interested to see how it goes. But I wonder if we do have a second season, whether they, even if they keep the 24 as the amount of players, whether they shorten the length, because it just seems like a really long time. And it kind of shocks me, because you'd think, like, the Australians not doing it quite as well, that, that we would be doing less. Like, yeah. we would do 29 or something. Um, yeah. Well, it's, and, it's... like... It, like, that's a lot more days you've got to pay your crew members and you've got to build challenges. Well... Wow. That makes no, it all the more expensive. Well, that was the other thing I was going to say too, is like you hit the nail on the head. Like, again, they can't afford to be spending $25 million or $30 million, however it is, however much the Americans do their version for. You know, you know, adding an extra two and a bit weeks to a shoot for a show like this and only pay them, you know, the winners only get half a million. That's just, I, I don't know, I just don't understand the financials. Like, I don't know who did run their numbers but to me that just seems like ludicrous like why wouldn't they just go let's just do 40 days to be different yeah or 35 or do 42 days 55 that's so much more filming that's just i think it's yeah. because they can put if they put two episodes a week on they can get more advertising money for that and depending if it's successful there's a bit of a risk though like yeah yeah I, I think it's to do with the fact that there's two episodes a week and that can earn, you know, you look at TV now, there's not that much else on, so it could rate really, really well. I'm hoping it does, you know. Um, but, but, you know, yeah. yeah. But Audience I numbers mean, are declining, though, for, for all way. those shows. And it's really only reality shows that kind of get put on network TV now. Like, all the dramas are on Netflix and streaming services. Um, yeah, I don't know. But having, having said that, like, I totally get what you're saying, Julian. I mean, it's all about advertising dollars and, and what you can go get in. And if you are showing a, a good show two nights a week, obviously that's more advertising dollars. But, 
you know, you think about even the Australian Outback, that was 42 days. And the problem with that is they got, they milked it for one more episode. And Not you know boring. what? I, lo- I still love that season. But yeah, it was boring towards the end because I only had the three or four people to show or five people and there was nothing happening. And it's like, well, you know, 55 days, okay, there's going to be a few more people around before the end. But you just think the less people there are, two episodes a week. Is it actually going to be that much great stuff to be putting in an episode? Is it going to get boring? People just tune out. That's what. Not, that's my worry for. It. No, no, that's a fair worry, and actually, like, that's a pretty good point. I haven't really thought about that. I must say, though, initial reaction to fifty-five days, like, I was excited. I was like, "Yeah, that's awesome!" Like, make it like I don't know, because I've always wanted the US to change it up, and if I even got excited when it was like thirty-nine days and a half or day zero that they had in blood versus water seasons and i was like why did they never go back to 42 days like they had in the australian outback but yeah like all those concerns are pretty pretty like legitimate and i hope it yeah like you said it doesn't get really like too difficult for them and i also hope like someone else i think it was ryan or maybe noah that 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 comes at the expense of you know making it easier or too easy for them um just because it's longer like so it's a balance. They've got to get the right balance with that. Yeah, it's interesting because, yeah. like, you could surely you could have, and I was thinking about this before, like, even if we're having 24 players, sorry, 24 players, and if you're going to have, like, 21 tribal councils, surely you could do a tribal council every second day. Like, there's still a lot of downtime that goes on at camp. Like, they could, they could have accelerated the process to make, I don't know, 44 days, 45 days, make it, you know, that long and just get it, done like it just to 55 days it just seems like a long time and, and cable is right about production like that's an extra two and a half weeks that they're out there paying people to to be filming paying people to be away from their families yeah it's interesting so i'm mean, just i just want to see how it plays out well that's what i said before um survivor south africa they do 27 days but they do a tribal every day or every second day and their episodes run for 70 minutes uh not including ads um so they get 70 minutes worth of footage and it was a good season then their most recent one um that they did and that's 70 minutes worth of good footage um from just one days on the island you chuck in a challenge some strategy some idle stuff a tribal council and then some fun moments like i remember they had a scene once where they had like a three or four minute scene where the the whole tribe was just playing cricket yeah. and it had nothing to do with anything they were just playing island cricket and it was a fun scene like it allows for that um and yeah that season was a bit slow sometimes but they were managed to get 70 minutes of footage out of one day on the island so like we could easily watch the american version and they could easily do 70 minutes worth of footage like those episodes are trimmed so much that we get like three or secret four scenes. cast members. <laughs> yeah. Well, we'll get to secret scenes, but three or four cast members in each season of Survivor, maybe not quite wrong, go invisible. Um, so they could still do 39 days and have two episodes a week and not have invisible people. But, mm. yeah, I don't hate the decision. I'm w- willing to see how it plays out, but I'm a bit optimistic. Yeah. Um, or a bit cautious about one of our um before we i guess move on from that like i did notice um one of our former auslets linda she posted when it was announced 55 days i think she posted a, some sort of link and then tagged a lot of survivors she's friends with or has met at reality rally and stuff like that and you know you had jimmy t and and dan foley and a, a lot of people commenting going oh my god there's no way we could ever do 55 days and they were like just as gobsmacked at 55 they're like that's just mental like such so, a I mean, shock for, hey yeah mm. so for them to say they you know like jimmy t didn't last that long but you know dan went pretty deep into worlds apart and i think there's a few others like they were like geez we thought it was hard but 55 days whoever wins that's kind of like that's that's epic but yeah you, you mentioned it before cable but half mil cash prize five hundred thousand. um which, yeah, for 55 days, you'd think that up it a bit, uh, especially as the big failure had had a yeah, million dollar prize. Um, yeah, like, how can they which, offer a million for that? And then. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, I believe we don't pay taxes on our prize money. Mate. No, we don't. Wrong. Um, no, we don't. And after taxes in America, if you're not Richard Hatch, it becomes 600000 700000 So it's not yeah. actually. 
and obviously there's currency conversion and all that, but it's not a huge difference to the American prize, but it does lack the punch of saying a million dollars. You're playing a one in six shot of a million dollars. Um, but yeah. I'm not too worried. I think it's a decent cash prize. Uh, what do you think, Ryan? No, yeah, I pretty much agree. I was going to say the same point as you did about the tax issue. Like, I think 500000 is still a good amount, but you're right. There's nothing at beating, like, saying $1 million. And we're talking about Survivor in the US. They've been playing for a $1 million for, what, 16 years now? Even even yeah. now, you think, like, a $1 million Inflation. now... Inflation. <laughs> yeah, like, like, in some cities, Sydney, Melbourne, like, that's, you know... It's it's not going to go Hobart. that far. Yeah, <laughs> we're okay. We're okay. No, Hobart and Adelaide. It's okay. It's still cheap. Yeah. you know, out out there. And I'd the, love that a million cities. dollar prize. That would last me ten years. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. I I would be more interested in hearing the like second place, third place, twenty fourth place prizes. Um, but Julian, anything else to add on the half million? Oh. No, I mean, I, I really think they could have just done a million, though, like, somehow. Like, I don't get why they just didn't. Well, I, mean, I know how. So much Cut 55 days down to 39 days and yeah, all of exactly. that money you're paying. I would almost rather it be price. shortened by a few days. I'm sure they could have come up with an... 500K is fucking, like, peanuts, really, at that point of the cost that they're, they're going to actually spend. I would have preferred a million. And so I do think it's pretty annoying, but, like, I'm not going to harp on about it because at least it's not like Big Brother 250K or whatever that was. So, um, can't, they win, can't you win a million on the millionaire hot seat in one night by answering one question? If you get real um, here. No, there was a – yeah, on the million – whatever, million-dollar minute or something. Yeah, he won a million dollars. So yeah, yeah, so if they could do it for like a crappy 6 o'clock uh, <laughs> game show, surely they can scrap together some money somewhere. Um, well – and I guess that's the point someone just raised. I mean, you think, well, hang on, you're only going to get five hundred thousand. Why don't you bump it up to make it a million? Because it make it makes it seem more legit. I'm sorry, but you know, at the end of the day, if I had a one, I don't care. The money's not the biggest issue here, and I know we're all, we're pretty reasonable people that go, you know, it's not all about you know five hundred thousand, not too bad. But you know what? A lot of people, and I heard Hamish, um, Hamish and Andy talk about it when they did an interview when it broke about. Australian Survivor, and they said one of the non-negotiables to make this seem like a legitimate show, um, it has to be a million dollars. And I actually agreed with them at the time. I just think we just have to look like it's it's a big. It makes deal. it look cheaper. It all. It, I yeah. think that's the thing. Psychologically, it makes it yeah. automatically seem like the show is more budget, and that's even if that's not the case. Yeah, uh, and, and so if I'm they sure. had a. Tr- if they had it stuck to 39 days or 40 or 42, that extra money they're spending on just, you know, staff, cast, crew, camera, film, all that sort of crap, they're going to save that half a million dollars to pay the winner in that ridiculous amount of extra time. So I don't know why it couldn't have been a um, million dollars. I think that's fair and reasonable. I know what we're saying about the Americans get taxed, but you know what? That's not our fault. I mean, and I think it's embarrassing that the big adventure was a million dollars. Like, come on. Uh, yeah, that was the big that. selling point of the big failure is that it was watch this show because it's legitimate and it's a million dollars. Um, so if that crappy little show can do it, it's kind of like you'd think yeah. that would be the one extra point to push them over the line with this yeah. season. But at yeah. the same time, I'm not bothered by it, really. It would have been cool, but it oh, really but, doesn't matter okay, to me. Okay, I'll put... I'll, put you in the shoes of potentially you've gone out there to play. Now, you, you might not think you're going to win, but you, you, you're you playing to win and you're hoping to win a million dollars or you think it's at least a decent prize, mate. And then you get told you're paying, playing 55 days. I think you'd feel a bit stiffed that you're only going to get half a million for 55 days. Would you not? I'd be a bit pissed off. I think you would, but I also think they those 24 that got on went through so much, like narrowed it down from 16,000 people down to them, that I think once they're in the game and they're really playing the challenges and the strategy and the idols, I don't think they're going to be bothered too much. But I imagine that if they even did tell them, maybe they did an Australian Survivor Season 1 and just didn't tell them. Um, if they didn't, but, well, the, the, Australian, the first season, that they had it, almost had an exile of um, a mutiny of the players because they thought it was for a million dollars and they weren't told. 
they told it was half a million. And the final four or final five said, we're, we're stopping. We're not going to play this game anymore until you bump it up or something like that. And then they had to get negotiators and production and, and Channel 9 executives in to tr- fix the problem. What a so, season that was. <laughs> well, yeah. But you know what I mean? I just, I don't know. I, was, I don't know. I think it just seems so much more, just, just feels right if it's a million dollars. As like, long as the characters are good and the strategy and the the funny moments and the challenges, it doesn't bother me. But if it affects their gameplay and they're like, oh, we're not going to try, then that yeah. would bother me. But I, but I don't, I don't think, think anyone's going to try, but I just, I don't know. I think, yeah, you're seeing it from our, our audience point of view. It doesn't really bother us. But, I mean, I'm looking at it from, if I'm playing this game and I want to, you know, you know, they, they expect the best from me and, and me to give great confess all this and that. I want to be paid for it if I win. Yeah. If I'm paying 55 um, days, I'm saying I want a million dollars, none of this half bullshit. I just anyway, totally a... think like 500K in the scheme of things is not that much. So I, I struggle no. to, th- yeah, exactly. I struggle to think why they couldn't just come up with that. I don't know. Yeah. I would be interested to hear when we interview these people after the season's filmed. Um, what they think. That would be an interesting question. Like, what was your reaction when they told you? And when did they tell you? Um, yeah. So that would be interesting. Maybe we can even ask them on Twitter if they're on Twitter during the season. Um, uh, let's move on. To, we've got a few little things. We've covered the main points, but there's still a few things we can discuss here. Um, the logo was a thing. Um We've actually, so far, we've seen three different logos. So I'm not sure what the real logo actually is. Um, there's one, and and also the buffs, which we'll talk about. And we might put a picture on this post of, for the episode. Um, but if you go to the Wikipedia page, they've got, like, that gold-plated one from the beginning, except for now yeah. it's got outwit, outplay, outlast, down the bottom. Um which, again, that's back, the catchphrase, which wasn't in the original Australian Survivor, so we can have hope for other things uh, from the American one coming in. But then there's also uh, the buff, which was on, what was it? They had this launch thing, the Australian Survivor launch party, which I still don't know what that was, um, but a bunch of people got together to have some free champagne. um, And they had these buffs, and... I don't think we really know what the buffs will be, if it's just like a promo buff or if it's going to be a merge buff. If you just Google image Australian Survivor 2016 buff or something like that, you'll see a picture of it. And that they've got a different logo on there where it has the Survivor with the torch eye and then it's kind of got this red background and a blue watery thing I'm looking at right now. And it keeps out where our player outlast the spot and then the buff is just black with a few little patches on it so maybe it's the merge one maybe it's just a promo one so there's been a few logos but i think we've got the general gist of what it's going to be like and i guess we can go with the buff one as the main one um but yeah julian have you looked at any of the logos or the buffs i have seen just the um the gold generic one and i hope that's not it to be honest like uh I, look uh, look it's fine like it, it looks kind of good um but yeah look it's not it doesn't excite me i i i would like to see the color back um in it so yeah we'll see and did you see the buff at all or? no what was the buff sorry so did you say that already what color uh, was yeah it, what, it was what black they? with uh bloody black <laughs> with little patterns on it. So did, um, the, did it look good quality? Like, was the trim and the pattern reminiscent of, you know, the standard buffs? Like, I, There's not I know too I should... much of a pattern, but it doesn't look like... It just looks like a buff. Like, okay. if it didn't have... I just don't want it to be too to plain. It. Like, I want there to be detail. Like, I always like a lot of detail in the logos and the buffs. Um, and there's some of my favourite logos have been the ones that, like, capture the location in it and I don't know, lots of little details or an animal and stuff like that. So yeah, we'll see. Uh, Ryan, Black is a bit check out the yeah. buffs and logos yeah. at all. Uh, yeah, I didn't mind it. I'm probably not the right person to ask. Cable is probably the the expert on buffs, but yeah, I thought it was <laughs> decent. Yeah, I don't care about buffs. To be <laughs> and like, I guess like we're seeing the way that they're using the survivor. Like it's, it's like the castaway productions, 
Survivor. It's not the US version, so it's a little bit different with the eye of the torch. So, yeah, All was, international Survivors. Yeah, probably. which is fine. Like, I would have liked to, to have Australian Survivor, like Samoa or the name of the season on there. Oh, yeah. Something like yeah. that would have, would have been cool, but... Apart from that, like it, it's pretty stock standard. It, it's probably a merge buff, I would say, if it's black. So, yeah, I, I'm interested to see what the buffs look like when they go out, but it's not a huge issue to me. I hope we can buy them. That would oh, be definitely. annoying if we can't buy them. Yeah. Um, and I wonder where they would sell them in Australia if we could, if it's just like an online thing, or if we'd be able to get them at like, I don't know. Well, buff, <laughs> buff, <laughs> where, yeah. buff probably would release them if they are mass produced because generally yeah, but, I've, I've spoken but to some are they going to make us ship them from America and pay $60 no, postage no, 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 like no. for our own no, buffs no 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 buff actually have different outlets across the world and I'm pretty sure oh. we did used to have buff uh, buff representative here in Australia um, and generally as a rule um, all buffs when they, they're produced they have to produce in certain numbers so there will be it, like even the American versions on the show, like when Jeff says drop your buffs, there's already they're already mass produced. So, um, yeah, I can't imagine them not selling them, but I don't know. Maybe they'll just give them away as freebies or something, or they'll be part of competition or something. They'll be on Hamish and Andy. Yeah. So, um, but um, yeah, the logos um interesting because my take i was sort of i didn't mind the the gold sort of plated one but i sort of thought they'd add some color later which you can sort of see in the buff but to me it's very reminiscent it's very similar to actually the borneo or the original survivor season Mm -hmm. um cbs with the water at the bottom and sort of the palm trees at the top um yeah look it doesn't phase me too much um bit like ryan yeah it would have been nice to see samoa but then having said that i think we just have to have to have our own branding on it as well um maybe if you put the actual location and any other international audience go to watch it and it says australian survivor samoa it, it might be just too confusing for retard so um, <laughs> um, that's a good way to put it well no well let's be honest like no i get what you're saying the majority of people that watch tv aren't the smartest sort of like Australian Survivor <laughs> Samoa, and then on another yeah. channel you've got Survivor Millennials. Gen- it's just yeah. <laughs> um, so oh, I don't know. Oh, look, it'd be interesting to even see if they how uh, Jono announces the season if there is some sort of theme or you just like guys are playing Survivor or. Oh, or, that's a good point. I hope there's or, not a theme for this first. Or, or yeah, uh, it'd be interesting to see. Like it's a bit like with Jeff. Like one minute you'll say blood versus water, and then you know you got. Brains versus Brawn versus Beauty. Oh, yeah, what will he say? Like, the 24th person voted out of Survivor. Will that, or will he say Australian Survivor? Like, that's going to be interesting. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it looks just little things like that. It'd be interesting because I know Jeff sometimes changes how he says stuff, and I don't know. Or well, sometimes he'll reference the season by a certain thing, and then, well, they all had tribe names last year, but they weren't mentioned till the merge. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, just silly yeah. stuff. Anyway, but. I think uh, us like, worrying about Samoa not being on the buff is really getting down to the minute <laughs> complaints and the, the geeky fans here. Like, we should be thankful that this season even exists. But Can you imagine I, if they did actually like, have buffs? Like, <laughs> like oh, oh. Save production costs, like, yeah, no buffs. We would be in a fit about yeah. that, so at least they have buffs. I'm well, not even let's hope they have guy, a merge buff. I would hate that, <laughs> Yeah, let's, let's hope they have a merge buff because if you all know uh, the Australian, uh, the Australian season didn't even have a merge buff. So, or oh, no, or two a, different. did they have a merge name? I don't think they had a merge yeah. They did. Name. They they had a oh, merge they? name and they had a merge sort of flag. It was like a silver, but they didn't actually have yeah a buff. Are these are these uh, people going to take after Worlds Apart and call the Merge Tribe Australia now? Probably. <laughs> um. Oh, I hope we do get a bogan on this season. That would be awesome. Of course we're going to get a bogan. Um, yeah, well, we could pray. <laughs> I don't watch be, any like, that's... other Australian reality, so are bogans cast on these shows? Yeah, they're going to put the Habibs on there. <laughs> that was a good yeah. show. <laughs> well, I, I do hope it is um, not only multicultural, but also different class bases, like you have the bogans and then 
you've got your really la da fancy people on there. Well, we'll definitely have to do a cast assessment episode once we know who's on. Yeah, I think I may be making this up, but I swear I did read an interview where one of the producers said the cast would come out before the show, which is good news um, that there good, will yeah. actually be um, the cast to talk about, which uh, leads into the next point. I Talking about our old... Uh, the old man, Beverly. Uh, yes. Uh, the same interview I referenced. <coughs> I've, written, I've written the quote here. Uh, she said that there's going to be a really deep digital extension for super fans. And she mentioned things like Twitter, 10 play, which I assume is like their ABC I view. I'm not sure I've never been on 10 play, but I'm going to assume. It's a, um, it's a app that for your tablet yeah. stuff. So. Yeah. Yeah. So it sounds like, and she really was promoting that this was like a 10 verse, that this is going to be a, a multi-digital TV show that's going to go beyond just the TV show, which is really good news, I think, um, that they're really going for it with the season. And it sounds like we may not get like Ponderosa, but it sounds like they will be giving us uh, bonus scenes or extra commentary and stuff like that. They're really going all out and... We're going to be seeing that this show is not just, um, not just going to be on the TV, and we're going to get all this other stuff. But it does mean that I need to get, um, what do you call them, VPN or something? Thing is this is going to be an online thing that I probably won't even be able to watch because I won't even be in the country. Um, so that's going to be interesting. <laughs> but yeah, I don't know, Ryan. Any thoughts on this whole that this is going to be a multi-platform uh, TV show and that they're really going for this stuff that the American version does. Yeah, like, I actually had written down multi-platform as something to talk about, so I was I was pretty excited. I, I did listen to that interview as well and watch that interview, and, like, I hope that they do something like a Ponderosa because I think that would be really cool, and I think we've seen the last couple of US seasons, the Ponderosa videos have been so terrific. So if even if the, even if they're half as good as those, it'd be really fantastic. And I know, I guess they they're trying to implement their social footprint already, which is which has been good. Um, even though they might be slightly behind, like an average fan's uh, Facebook page, but still they're doing pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> um, so look, I, I'm really hoping that they're going to really build that up and really build a strong community and try and get people to be engaging with the content because, like we know, Survivor is not just what we see you know, Sunday night or Monday night, whenever they show it, uh, 7.30 to 8.30, there's going to be a lot that else that goes on. So as a super fan, I'd be really excited to see some of that behind the scenes stuff. And like, I guess we saw with I'm a Celebrity that they had a show on 11 or whatever their sub channel is. And, and that seemed to go pretty well. So if it's something like that, even if it's web-based, that would be really cool. Yeah, I didn't know about the celebrity thing because I've never actually seen that show. But that would be cool if we got a, a bonus show on Eleven with like extra footage and stuff like that. Like, yeah, they ever um, the American version does. So. Yeah, I'll just sort of just elaborate on what Ryan just said. Yeah, they had um, so it was Joel Creasy who was in the first season on the Celebrity Get Me Out of Here. Obviously, a comedian, so he's pretty good at hosting sort of stuff, and he's hosted big gigs before. And Heather Maltman, who was from The Bachelor. We finished what third or fourth, Ryan? Maybe yeah, which they four, so so they and they they really promoted the hell over. I never really sat down and watched it, but yeah, you could once the episode had finished, you could flick to channel eleven and they would have further content, more funny stuff behind the scenes. They'd have more in depth interviews and stuff like that. And like Ryan said, apparently it did well. And as soon as you know they did that, I actually th- and and then when Survivor was announced, I sort of thought that might be something, and that was. That they would do with Survivor as well, and this I was would love it. If this was almost. Well, I was thinking this might have almost been their trial to see how well that went, and and whether that was worth doing for Survivor. So, um, yeah. Have you got anything else to add on the whole multi-platform thing? <laughs> oh, look. To be honest, I mean, look, I'd, I'd love to have more time to sit down and watch all the uh, Ponderosa videos and all that sort of stuff. But you know what? I don't. I just watch the, um, as Stephen Fishback would say, the episodes that are canon, and and that's all I pretty much do. I listen to obviously the odd podcast but i don't have time to sit there and and look at all the secret scenes so i just have to go on secondhand information um but i think i think this is good i think they need to do it i think they need to have 
more advertising there. So when you open up yeah. the episode of The Secret Scene, just have a few more little clips or McDonald's up in the corner or Harvey Norman or whatever it is. I think they need to do that financially anyway. Um, yeah. I just, I just, the only thing I, I, I probably issue I, I can see with it though is one of the beauties of the American version and the reason we love Survivor is it's edited a certain way. So you, you only see little bits and pieces and they edit together and we'll see one side of a story. And it obviously, because if they showed us everything, we know who the winner or potential winner is and we know where all the alliances actually are and where the decisions are made. It's not going to be interesting. So my issue would be with, apart from having 55 days and multi-nights, they're going to have to edit it so well to not, telegraph potentially the winner too early or make it too obvious and having an extra platform if they're going to show even more information i i just worry whether they're going to play their too many of their cards or show too many of their cards i should say and that's and then to me that's boring there's no suspense to it and there's no cool twists or things that you know like jeremy getting voted and someone else so it was so good because they only gave a certain amount of information so if they give us too much, I just I worry. That's my concern with the format they're going for, is that they're going to give us too much information and and too many things are not going to be a surprise to the viewer. So I just hope they don't. I get don't too- watch. I don't watch Australian reality TV, so you guys will have to fill me in here. Um, does things like the winners edit the Purple Kelly characters are these things that happen in Australian reality shows? Mm, I don't know either. Well, I, I like in a show like MasterChef, I've been watching this season on and off, and there's there's certain characters who definitely more prominent throughout. So, like, I think if I turned onto MasterChef, not even watching for the next month or so, if I turned on, I I think I could probably guess who the final couple could be just from now. So I think I think that's interesting considering that we know the producers uh, are coming from a MasterChef and Bachelorette Bachelor background in Australia. So I think that possibly with the edit in the Australian version, we might see a similar style to, to those kind of shows. So I think there's a possibility we could see one, but like the whole winner's edit thing, that's been really talked about a lot this season, obviously with Michelle, but like who has a winner's edit? Like we, we always interpret at the end that this was the winner's edit. Like going that's back. That's after the fact. That's so after very the fact, yeah. To say that. yeah. Yeah. And, and like, I know like someone does has a great example. Like if you're telling me that like Josh or Jeremy weren't going to be the winner after like the merge time, I would have like told you you're lying because they had the winner's edit. So it's always subjective and it's always after the fact that we say, oh, this had the winner's edit. So yeah, I'm interested to see how it goes. Um, I just hope that, well, on that, I'm pretty sure Endemol Shine did the Amazing Race Australia, and Amazing Race doesn't really have the purple characters and the winners and stuff like that, Um, but they did a good job of showing everyone, so that's the only one I've seen, so that gives me hope. Um, But Julian, are you excited for extra content, like even more emoji videos? Actually, yeah, I was saying, like, that's a good sign to me that the Channel 10 is going to spend a lot of money. Like, they're spending a lot of money on it, so they're going to spend a lot of money promoting it. And I honestly believe now with TV, there's so little to watch on, like, primed on, on normal network television. Like, people will watch it if it's sort of shoved down their throats enough. So I actually hope that 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 does help to get people watching it and excited and hyping it, everyone up. So... Yeah, look, I mean, I ended up watching Stupid House Rules and and My Kitchen Rules and all those shows just because there's nothing really on. Like now I'm on Netflix, but I still think there's a good percentage of the people that will sort of just watch what's there because there's not that much to choose from and it's all sort of like those competition reality shows. So well, I don't really – my point, yes, I'm glad that they are doing all that extra stuff because I think it will get people more invested in the show and – and um and that means if there's enough people watching it, then they'll hopefully do another season, which is really what I I want. Like I don't want this just to be a flash in the pan. Like I think we all can say that we want it to be a success. I just hope it's more like Ponderosa secret scenes, extra interviews, and that because I'm sorry, I find those unedited confessional things just so boring. They have yeah, like they- thirty of them. And I ended up watching like four of them each week 
of like my favorite like oh great i'm gonna hear more from keith and kimmy and wigglesworth but i can't watch any more of these yeah the food reward was nice and we did the these. challenge was really tough yeah. Oh, yeah i just drop them and give us more secret scenes because there's like hours and hours and hours of funny moments they could show um we mentioned a bit of variety in the cast. There's not too much to actually talk about here, but I've read multiple times. Uh, I think Jono said this in an interview, and I think a producer said this. The cast ranges from people in their mid-20s through to their mid-60s, which is a very good sign, and it's not something we really expect from Australian reality. We expect everyone to be in their early 30s or late 20s. Um, with the odd person in their 40s. Um, so good that sounding like we might get a bit of a mix, and Jono said a mix of occupations and character types too. Um, so good, that's a good sign. One thing they keep pushing, um, and I only got a few more points left here, but one thing they keep pushing is they keep talking about how Australians value mateship, which was a flaw of the first season. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> well, yeah they yeah. watched that season. Um, okay. And that's just, they, I, I think one of the producers saying how they didn't want to live up to stereotypes in their character types. Well, that's just a major stereotype in itself. Um, well, kind of. Uh, I think there's a bit of truth in there that we value mateship. But do we when we're playing in a game that's all about betrayal and all this stuff? Um, but that, it worries me a little bit, but I'm still staying optimistic that they keep talking about we're valuing mateship and the, the trouble, the struggles in this season isn't going to be people turning on each other, uh, like blindsiding and being sneaky. It's going to be whether or not they value mateship enough and all this stuff. They keep oh, pushing God. this. And to be honest, we could get up in arms into that about it, but I don't really know what they're really meaning when they keep saying this. It's very vague, but it gives me a bit of worry, this whole are we just going to get pagongings and that, and are they going to put twists in there that, like, you could turn on your friends, but this is going to come back to bite you, so make sure you stay in your alliance. Um, so, yeah, I'm not going to get too up in arms, but I'm a little worried about this, Julie. Yeah, it just comes down to, I hope we get a cast that um, is a sophisticated and familiar with strategy of Survivor and not just like the early days when it was just about, you know, a bit of a camping trip and and um, I want a cast that has seen, you know, the show and um, aren't going to be necessarily a bitter jury at the end, like who can value, you know, good gameplay and if someone, you know, wh- r- whether they've had to turn on them, that doesn't mean that they won't vote for them, you know, if it was a good move. So that's kind of what it comes down to. Um, and hopefully by this stage of the people that apply really will be familiar with the show. So I don't think that's going to be too much of a problem, but it'll be interesting to see. Yeah. I don't think it will be a problem amongst the cast. I'm just worried they'll, they'll throw out twists of this tomorrow on survivor. Will Jim value mateship? Uh, yeah. I hope they don't, will, like, he, I hope will they he don't... take the temptation? I'm with you. Like, I hope they don't force that whole mateship narrative down our throat. Like try and like, yeah, try and make it too like yeah. I, I don't want just it don't to do be twists positive. about like I just want it to be like Australia I just want it to be like a regular good season of Survivor just happens to have Survivor Australia. but with Australians in it. Yeah, like I don't want it to be like a whole navel gazing self reflection on Australia like a larger trying to make any points about our socio cultural bullshit, you know what I mean? So well yeah, it'll be interesting yeah. how they present it. Cable, do you value mateship? I do, but not in Australian Survivor. I, I would never, ever... Like, you're going to make friends and then have the social, but, I mean, if you're going to go on about mateship... I'd probably actually use that to my advantage. I'd probably use the word mateship, but... No, I, look, yeah, it's one of those things that, that when they say stuff like that worries me, and, look, I don't want to harp on some of the early points I've already said, but I did hear... I, I don't know if it was Beverly or it was one of the other producers they were talking about how they were going to really stay true to the formula of the American version and it's going to be, you know, rah, rah, rah. But it's like, well, hang on. If you're doing that, why is it 55 days? Why is it half a million dollars? Why have you got 24p? I just feel like they, they've said one thing, but they've still, they're still taking risks to create their own identity with the show. And I don't know, it's, 
look, I'm still really on the fence. I'm still worried. Uh, you know, it's not going to go well at all. Um, you know, even when they advertised it when it first broke that they were going to do this, you know, they advertised blind size, you know, betrayal, this, this, and this. And it's like, well, I'm sure that's going to happen, but how do you, you're telling us like you've guaranteed it and it's already been filmed. Like, you can't, you're going off the American version, but you're casting Aussies. Yeah, you're going to probably cast people that you know they're going to butt heads or they're going to be shifty as. But if they, what if, what happens if they have cast, uh, and I know Ryan's really good with finding out information on who people that have had interviews and all that sort of stuff. I'm sure I can almost guarantee half of the people cast are fans of the show or have had it, seen a fair bit of the show. And I reckon half the other people would have seen barely anything and so, or, or a very, very casual at best. So that's going to be interesting in itself to see, you know, how those types are going to play. Like I can imagine us having the old, 55 year old farmer that hasn't seen it a lot and is a bit like a Keith Nail that is going to not necessarily stick to the plan. So I don't know. I just, I, I know that even the way they sort of they've hyped it, I, I, you know, early days, I just think, how can you guarantee that? Like you said, someone said something about Pogonging. Like, it, who's to say, you know, there's not going to be just a Pogonging, it's going to be boring. I don't know. It's, it's just, I just, I'm fine with it and say there's going to be blind sides or something. Just don't do a classic Australian reality trope and be like a production twist where, uh, Jim, if if you blindside this person, we'll give you $500 or something like that. Or Just don't manufacture these things. Um, we, we don't want a Stacey Stillman lawsuit or anything like that. Just, <laughs> oh, I hate keep, that fucking let, bitch. <laughs> wow. Uh, let the castaways uh, make their own story. Let's not manufacture this stuff. She's going to sue the podcast now. That yeah, I know. Us. Exactly. <laughs> uh, Ryan, valuing mateship. Look, uh, it's an interesting concept, the whole concept of mateship. Look, I, it, to me, it tells me why, if, if it is mateship and that's what they want, I will never be cast on Australian Survivor because like, I'd probably sell out my own mother to get on this show. So like, uh, this, is, this is the kind of show where this is... When you go to the island, you've got to put stuff like mateship behind it. The, you're here to play a game. It's not for a million dollars, but it's for 500000 which is still a lot of money. You're playing to win. So, look, I'm interested in about... Cable uh, hit on the point about who they're trying to cast, and I have spoken to a few people who, who made it later in casting process, and they were more super fans. But from, from what I'm hearing, it is a very big mix between people who have seen the show and are fans of the show and a mix of people who have not seen the show at all like these are people who obviously they've got casting connections through whoever else through Endemol Shine they've got casting connections through other shows and they've brought them in they want to put them on a show they think that this might be the kind of good show to put them on so it's going to be a really interesting mix can I just say thank god that they didn't put Zilda Zilda Williams on the show from The Bachelor, like, that would have been horrendous. I'm hoping we don't get any people like that, like, ex-Bachelorettes on the show. Oh, yeah. That's going to be shocking if we do. But, uh, look, I- I'm open, I'm pretty excited. I hope that casting has been done well. Just have to wait and see. But I'm not worried about the whole half-half thing. I actually think that's probably a good move. No, I think um... it's it's important. You need a cast that has... People who you are can't good have all and... game bots. Yeah, you can't... yeah, you need good. Characters. As long as they made yeah. them watch a couple of seasons, I don't want them to go on without having seen a single thing. At least give them background knowledge. But no, I think most agree. people, though, most people, though, even if they haven't really seen it, would know the basic premise if they were going to go out there of what you have to do to win, like build an alliance and blah blah blah. And we always but... talk about this as well. But like someone like Earl, he, he had never seen Survivor before. If, if I'm thinking correctly like he went as a survivor barely had seen anything went on and won so people can play good games without never seeing the game before this is true as well all right i want to say um, one thing quickly sorry um just about the fact do you know how there's 24 people i get a feeling there's going to be so many people that we won't see barely any of because they'll be gone you know how there's so many people to show in an episode so We'll get to probably like week three and be like, "Who the fuck is that person? And have they been on the show?" Like, because it's it's hard enough with um Zilda who, person, yeah, like twenty person casts. You're like, oh, it's been like three weeks since such and such has had a confessional. So 
that's going to be interesting with the sheer amount of people, you know. If there's, a, I know it's two nights a week, so hopefully that compensates for it. But yeah, well, that I don't leads know. into my next point, um, and the last kind of major point for Australian Survivor is, um, I don't know who. I don't know, there was this picture, was it you that found it, Ryan, or somebody found it is, like, this uh, schedule of... Yeah, I found that. New Zealand advertising, like, what what, what do you call it? It's, it's like an advert the... schedule, so, like, it's, a, it's an Yeah, ad like guide. a TV guide, yeah. but... But it, it tell, it's for the advertisers, and it advertises how much an advert will cost during a viewing of that show. Yeah. So it looks like a TV guide, but it's got, like, prices um, on there. And it's for New Zealand. Um, so that's kind of all but confirms they will be airing this season in New Zealand, which will, is kind of an interesting point, which we'll touch on in a bit, because that ties into something else. But um, that schedule had it as two nights a week. So I don't know if that's an absolute confirmation and what was the date uh was it like late august or something like I, that i think um, it was like around the september. beginning of september so very early september yeah so it's looking to debut just before um millennials versus generation x or mills versus gilfs um cable made a comment in in the chat um a joke but i would love them for it to do a future season of the tribe of australia versus the tribe of kiwis like they did with amazing race i think that would be a great twist down the line like season four or something yeah um but yeah so it look I, it, it's not absolute confirmed but i think it's pretty well speculated it's going to be two nights a week um and it's going to be premiering around september and that kind of I think most people were under the assumption when they brought up multi nights a week, we thought that it'd be two or three nights of like one night would be a reward challenge and then some tribal dynamics. And then the next night would be the immunity challenge and then some dynamics or something. And then the next night would be the tribal council or cut one night out and the same thing. But we're looking at, it's probably going to run similar weeks to, um normal survivor 12 13 14 weeks so a cast of 24 you need to narrow that down if you say maybe the premiere no one gets voted out and then maybe the merge episode no one gets voted out then you have an episode a recap before the well not a recap but just a general episode before the finale we might be looking at two nights a week but just regular episodes with someone getting voted out most nights of the week uh, or two people getting voted out each week with a few exceptions, like maybe the premiere, someone might not go to episode two or something. Um, so maybe it might not be this whole stretched out thing that we thought it would be eventually, uh, originally, right? Yeah, no, I 100% agree. Like uh, when I found that, I thought this is really interesting and I, I agree with what you were saying, like, I'm calculating 21 tribal councils. That's including the final tribal. And I guess, like, if if we're going to have that many... You're right. If we don't have an elimination on the first night, if they have a merge where there's no elimination, uh, if, you know, there's something that happens, they decide, okay, there's no elimination tonight, I can definitely see that happening. So, yeah, I think it's, I think it's really interesting. And I, I'm hoping that that's what we see where we just see a standard episode, even if it's like an Australian reality show where they stretch it out and instead of being like your typical one hour show it goes for an hour and a half or a little bit like that that's okay but I'm hoping that there's an elimination like we're a vote off most nights if there is a vote off most nights then I would be fine with it being definitely like 90 minutes with ads um that would almost be a good thing if if there's a vote off each time um yeah but obviously this is all speculation, but it's looking more and more likely that that's what's going to happen with the 24 cast, which I'm ecstatic about. I was a bit worried about the whole stretching three three days on the island into two episodes or whatever. But, yeah, Cable, any thoughts on this? Um, no. <laughs> Sorry, I was timing something. No. I kind of lo- <laughs> I kind of lost my train of thought. So I don't want to just say random stuff julian any thoughts on this i am just glad that it's if it is two episodes 
a week, that is good. Three would have been too many, in my opinion. Yeah, so I would like to see someone go, like you guys said, most nights. Um, yeah, and I, 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 just another point about the editing. I just hope that the editing's sharply sort of quick edited. I just don't want it to drag on. I think Cable said earlier, like, I hope they don't show too much. It's just a bit boring, you know what I mean? Like, I'd rather have less Survivor and it be nice and tightly edited and not giving away stuff than... Yeah, I don't know, sort of scrambling for interesting shit to show us. What they need to do as well is no narration from Jono um, after the initial first, like, pre, like the beginning of their first episode and um, the previously on. And also no coming up after the break and showing a preview. And then when the break is finished, showing like the last 30 seconds before oh, that. Yeah, I can't stand that's it. That's horrible. That's going to be very upsetting. Um, that's what stands... Yeah, that interrupts it. That feels dreadful when they do shit like that. Yeah, and, and so many shows do it, but that's what stands Survivor apart and makes it so much better than all these yeah. shows. Makes it, well, of that. It, it's funny you say that, Noel, because that was one thing I, concern I had because it's Channel 10. They do that real, especially with The Biggest Loser and even The Bachelor, even though those productions are pretty good. They will show you a clip and they'll say after the break and they'll show what's going to happen. Yeah. And then they come back and they show the same 30 seconds, 45 seconds. And you're like, really? You've just shown it again. Just don't just get straight into it. Like We're not that up. stupid that we're forgotten in a two-minute break. Oh, well, yeah. I don't also like sometimes with some of those shows. Like I'm not 100% sure, maybe not The Bachelor, but I know Biggest Loser, sometimes they, they will show you something in advance too when it's going to the ad break they'll tell you what's going to come next but they're going to say and later yeah, coming on, up later in the show and they'll show something else that's, you know further down the episode you know the 45 minutes like don't show us that just show the episode as it is it's so Keep it desperate don't don't leave don't change the channel please this this big moment's coming up yeah it's just like uh, we're not idiots um well some of us are. yeah sure. uh so just before we move on, you you really don't have anything to add on multi nights. Oh no, I think in our first episode, I was really concerned with multi nights. Um, like I said, now that it's fifty five days and twenty four people, multi nights doesn't scare me as much. I definitely was worried about three. I think two is definitely a better better mix. Two's a good it, it is, but then I, I think you mentioned with the South African one and, and other shows do it, and I think, you know, even um, some other American shows do longer episodes instead of the, you know, 45 minutes with ads. They do sort of a 60, 70 minutes with ads. So that wouldn't bother me either. Like, again, I, I just don't want them to show us too much. It just I think it's got a real chance of losing its you know, losing audience audience interest if they don't have enough surprises by being smart with what they show us. So if they show too much, they just, yeah, I don't know. I just two nights don't worry, are not as concerning as three for sure. And we're thinking it's probably going to be like the start of the week. Is it like a Sunday, Monday, or a Monday, Tuesday, or something well, like that? I don't um, know, did, Ryan, did you find like a, a potential? Was it a guide as well? Yeah, that look, was yeah it was a New yeah. Zealand. It was from New Zealand though, so you got to take oh, it okay. of salt. So we don't don't really know, but clearly, don't like, trust the kids. Yeah, like there's no way they're going to put it on what a Thursday night because that's the same night as US Survivor. That's that's just going to be if they do that, that's just horrendous. Yeah, like mm, that's it, bad for both people involved. involved. Yeah, you're just going to be losing out on both. So. Yeah. Well, and you you say that too, Ryan. Like, I mean, not everyone watches the same shows anyway, and they can't look. There's going to be some shows that clash anyway. But I agree with you. I think that'd be suicidal to go against the American version. Um, but also, you think of Thursday night when it comes to sport. You know, there's so many football shows and and stuff on Foxtel and the Footy Show and or the NRL show. I just don't think that'd be smart putting up against sport either so oh, look I, I think it comes back a little bit they've been talking about how they're using the multi-platform as well and we're seeing so much now where people are catching up on tv either through the recording it or they're watching it online so look i don't i don't think necessarily the time and place is a huge issue as long as the the people are watching it but i i can't see us survivor going head to head with oz survivor it just to me it doesn't make sense I will be interested whether or not it will be a 7.30 or an 8.30. Um, but this is 
but yeah, we're thinking Sunday through Wednesday will be one of those days because it won't be Friday, Saturday, um, or and we've just talked about Thursday. Um, it, I'm, this is a whole other can of worms that we won't get into too much, but I am really fascinated what Go is going to be doing um, this upcoming season because uh, it's going to be weird having two, like three nights a week, we're going to be having Survivor and two different seasons. Like we talked about idiot viewers. I think most people will be able to tell the difference, but it will be interesting because like, I don't know. I, again, I don't watch Australian Survivor, so I'm not Australian reality, so I'm not sure if they aired American Bachelor at the same time or anything like that. But it will just be fascinating. Like, we'll go promote the hell out of it, or will they just say, ah, we've lost this one, we'll just chuck it on, but we may lose viewers. Are they going to give us extra, uh, like, footage? Is it going to help go out that people are going to be more interested in Survivor, so they're going to want to watch those seasons? It's just... So many positive possibilities. It's just fascinating to me. Um, but moving on to our last point, uh, shifting gears from Australia, and I think this is a good segue because we're talking about um, the dodgy Kiwi ad guides. Um, <laughs> that one thing, believe it or not, is coming is Survivor New Zealand, but no one seems to be talking about it. It's even the Americans are all talking about. Australian Survivor, but yes, Survivor NZ is a thing, um, which I don't think we've even put a post up about it uh, on our website. Come on, Nook Chista, what are you doing? Um, so it's just fascinating. There's almost no news about it. We know the host is Matt Chisholm. Um, I asked Nick about him, and he said that he's just a news guy, and uh, I don't know his exact quote, but Nick said he's got no profile and he thinks that this season may be a train wreck and that Matt Chisholm really doesn't have much to go on at all other than just being a local newsy. Um, so <laughs> that's pretty much the only news. Uh, I did Do they find know where it's filmed? Uh, no, nothing has come out about this season, which makes me think it, no way it doesn't debut until 2017. Um, although it would not shock me one bit if Samoa was the filming location, which will get into the ties between Australian Survivor and Survivor New Zealand. But it was such a shock um, because it's like Australian Survivor, oh, my God, it's actually happening. A few months later, oh, and by the way, there's a Survivor New Zealand coming out. And you have to think there is a connection towards, especially with Australian Survivor airing in, um, airing in New Zealand, it seems like, or at least they're thinking about airing it at least. Um, so, yeah, there's almost no news about this. Um, and maybe they're waiting for Australian Survivor to finish filming. But, yeah, they've got a host. And I did find an article that said around 8,000 people had applied, which, if you think about it, what, we had 16,000 um, people, I think. And if you compare the two countries, we have way more people. So a lot of Kiwi people want to get on the Survivor New Zealand Uh but, yeah, we have never brought this up. We haven't discussed it at all, not even on Oztopsies or anything. But, Ryan, any thoughts on Survivor New Zealand? There must be a connection between these two shows. Yeah, it's funny you talk about it. Like, I was reading just some Twitter feeds about Australian Survivor, and, and someone commented they were staying, I think, at the hotel that the Australian Survivor people were staying at, and they said something about, like, ooh, like, we're hearing that maybe there might be another Survivor production after this. So, to me, that might be be New Zealand Survivor, uh, to me, that would just make sense from a logistics point of view that obviously Australian Survivor is going to be there. They're going to be putting in infrastructure, camps, things like that. So for New Zealand, who must be like a very, like even smaller production than the Australian uh, version, to go to a location where the Australian one's just been, to, to work off some of the resources that are there, I think it just makes sense. Yeah, obviously there's a lot of Survivor production, so it could just be like Survivor Bulgaria or Expedition Robinson could or something. Be, but definitely. I think I think it does make a lot of sense that they would be piggybacking <coughs> maybe a lot of the same crew. Um, They'll probably be the same shitty challenges, like recycled. Yeah, the same challenges. It's repainted. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Painted some sheep on our uh, challenges that we used. Um, or they'll have like the Survivor Vanuatu catch the pig, but it will be like catch the sheep. Or well, do you reckon? Like that. Do you reckon instead of chickens, they'll have like mark the sheep in the New Zealand version? Yeah. 
<laughs> Brian the sheep or something like that. Um, but yeah, this was such a bizarre news that this came out, and it's a few months old, Cable. But Survivor New Zealand is a thing that's going to be happening at some point. Yeah, no, it really did sort of throw me. I guess just like the Australian version did, and, and maybe more so because you know studying um, cinema and, and media at uni and really knowing a lot of the stuff that goes into a production and, and the amount of financing you need to do, especially a show like this. Firstly, to think that we were going to do one and you know find out it's fifty five days and you know it's, it's not cheap, and then the to hear that New Zealand were going to do it, I sort of thought maybe there might be a a co-production type situation to say they split their funds or at least the Australian film first and, and build the challenges and they go Harvey's and stuff. I mean, to me that makes again, financial sense. I don't have an issue with it, but um, yeah, really, really surprising to think um, New Zealand were doing it as well. And just wonder where the negotiations started um, in maybe, you know, I guess doing these things together potentially. So like, like we said earlier in this podcast, you know, there's a good chance if they both are semi-successful, then, uh, you know, you might see a Australia versus New Zealand type of scenario in a couple of seasons. I think that would be great if the casting was right. Um, Cause the amazing race one, there was real manufactured rivalry, but really an amazing race. You're competing against everyone, like having a tribe of Australians, Having a tribe in New Zealanders would just be great, I think. Um, but, yeah, it would be interesting to see if we get the season here. I feel like we probably won't. I don't know how many New Zealand shows we do get, but I feel like they probably get more of our shows than we get of theirs. Um, but yeah, no I, doubt I'm we'll pretty, be able to find ways to watch it. Yeah, I think from memory they got the Australian Survivor the first time as well. Oh, really? Yeah, I'm pretty sure they did. Um, Those yeah. poor souls. Um, yeah, yeah. I think they gave up after the second episode as well. <laughs> but yeah, there's obviously like no news. So like the coming months, maybe when an Australian Survivor wraps up, I'm not sure how many days into it it is. Like 10, 15 days they've been filming. I'm not sure. Oh, uh, maybe even less than that. Um, so Australian Survivor is not going to be done for a few months. Yeah. Uh, but well, I feel like we'll do a, a full episode on Surviving New Zealand in future but there's really not too much now um was that uk what was about so yeah oh well, i was gonna say like we, we were sort of thinking well there's not much stuff apart from a host that we've heard about in new zealand not that i've been sitting there researching it at all but you know it seems fairly quiet but when you think about it we heard about our version in november and for a long time it was quiet um and it was all about yeah. casting and i know ryan's a bit of a detective when it comes to all things australian survivor and he's got his finger on the pulse so he'd know better than me but i know it's been really quiet i know even the australian survivor twitter feed like they started it but i mean that barely had firstly enough that many followers but they hadn't and they then hadn't nine made one the next day yeah, but but even then they they haven't. I know. Look, it's it's hard when you you haven't got news to announce. But I just think that, and and, and I guess going back to the multi multi platforms, I think Australian Survivor haven't done themselves any favors by trying to drum up interest a lot. Um, I think, and Ryan made the comment that there's you know a group, um, you know, a couple of groups that are bigger already with a lot more members than the actual official group on Facebook. So that tells you something i just think you got to really if you want people to get involved and, and and be a part of it and and get interested in it, i think you just have even if it's just crap just start posting stuff start hashtagging stuff just Emoji try to, video yeah but just put well just put up some things like even with that whole announcement for Samoa, they didn't even have to tell us straight away but they could have just posted the old instagram pic oh guess where we are but you know not telling it just generate interest the, the I feel like we will be getting that. Like to go all out in November when the season doesn't start till September. Like I feel like over the next few months we will be getting a lot more hype. Yeah, no, no, no. I don't doubt that, but I, I still think early days. I think they start. You know, they they created these groups or the uh, Twitter handles and stuff like that. And I just still feel like they still, you know, at least once a week or at least something just put it out there you know there's people following it and there's nothing happening it's not even active it's like it's an inactive account and it's like well what's the point like get people talking i mean there's people like ryan that i know have been you know searching all the different hashtags to find out information so why not use it to their advantage 
put stuff out there. Put some little cool little tidbits for people to find. I don't know. I just think, I just think they haven't really started off really well. But hopefully they, you know, gain momentum as the season starts to unfold. But um, personally, if I was involved with Channel Ten and trying to get people interested, I would have been. That would have been something I would have been really attacking head on and really making it bigger and and just, engaging the communities. Just to tie it back, um, I feel like in Australia we at least got a few videos and promos and we've had a launch party, although it was just, again, yeah, but, Channel 10 executives. Um, but I feel yeah, like with the New of, Zealand one, there's language. been one yeah. news article at least. Like that yeah. is completely out of the that like they don't even have a facebook or a twitter or anything like that i don't think um, yeah yeah so but i guess the one piece of news for new zealand is that casting has closed um so they're obviously looking at the people now um and it will be interesting to see how many days and how many cast members they have compared to ours if they're going to copy ours or copy america um that's assuming that new zealand is going to copy someone and they can't think on their own. Um, my assumption there, maybe they'll do something completely different and have 12 days or something. Um, but Julian, you've been a bit quiet. Do you have any thoughts at all on Survivor New Zealand? Survivor New Zealand. Um, I think it's, I'm pretty excited. The fact that there's just more Survivor to watch really like, yeah, we, I'm, I'm ex- oh my God, 2016. Is, even though it's almost a joke, like, Survivor New Zealand. Yeah. I honestly think, though, like it might have been a better idea if New Zealand was going to do one too for them to combine the financial resources and just like maybe that would have meant less Aussies cast. But I don't know, like not necessarily do tribe versus tribe, but that would have been a good idea. And I suppose they can still do that. But, you know, they could have made the season maybe even better if they put both countries' financial resources together. I don't know. But, um, yeah, I, I think it's weird that. I'm I'm shocked that New Zealand is doing one. To be honest, like we said, like it's a big shock. And it's just the whole thing. 2016 is a weird year because it's just 16 years after Survivor premiered and was popular. I love it. No, like, it's just Survivor. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's just weird. Who would have thought this time last year we'd be talking about Australian Survivor for 55 days and 24 contestants and Survivor New Zealand like. I honestly would think you were lying if you told me that this time last year. Um, I hope this, this and it just blows my mind that Survivor Canada is not a thing. Yeah, maybe it will be now, but I hope this show, like Survivor, renews interest in the American version for Aussies, and then they go back and you know have more fans. Like, because I I can talk to people and they're like, "Oh, is that show still on?" But then maybe <laughs> sort of renew interest for people, and they'll go back and watch some of the old seasons that can. Yeah, I don't know. Get get more people will be into it again. Who knows? Uh, yes, yeah, so that's it. We've talked about a lot of the news, and from this point, from the point we did our first episode through to now, we've pretty much covered everything that's come out. We'll probably have to do another episode in a month or maybe two months as it gets closer to the premiere. And keep you updated with website posts, um, top tens, and all all that jazz. So. Get pumped. This season is all about Australian Survivor 2016. I'm very excited. Um, so that's it. We'll, we'll wrap it up now and say goodbye. Um, Cable, any final thoughts before you go? Uh, I think it's been a good episode. We've covered a lot. Uh, anything you want to say about Australian Survivor before we do our next episode on the top? No, thanks for having me and go Australia! Uh, Ryan, thanks for joining us. Uh, keep us updated if you find out any more news. And yeah, very exciting uh, Australian Survivor. Yeah, super excited. And I think the big, probably the big day is July twenty second. Apparently, that's when everything should be wrapped up and done by. So I expect to start hearing news post that date. Yeah, so we'll probably do another episode uh, in july or maybe early august or something if that's true um and then that would be interesting with survivor new zealand to look after july 22nd if more news about that comes out yep um so yes stay tuned and jewel yes thanks for having me um it's been great to chat and i i would implore everybody to put their latest tidbits about survivor in the australian survivor community group on facebook it's a great group yeah, if anyone hears any news or just wants to talk about it, 
uh, yeah, let us know in, in that one or on Survivor Rolls website, Facebook, anything like that. Um, because I'm always down for talking about Australian Survivor. It's getting me really giddy the more and more closer <laughs> we get to it. And every time some more news comes out, it just makes me excited. Even for Survivor New Zealand too. Hell, I'm excited <laughs> to watch uh, people like Nick run around and chase sheep. It's going to be fun. Um, now, so, do we know, has Nick applied? Do we know that? Uh, last I heard, he didn't. But I don't know. Nook, fill us in. Let us know. Uh, we'll have to do a proper episode with him. Nick of the show just to talk about New Zealand. If he's even available, maybe he's off filming. Mm. He's with Ben. Uh, he's on the New Zealand <laughs> tribe. Ben's on the Australian tribe. Um, so, yeah, we really need Nick to have the authority figure uh, talk on Surviving New Zealand. Um, but, yeah, if you like this episode, let us know because I guess you could say this was an awesome show. Maybe not. Maybe it's just a Australian Survivor update. But if you like this, we're planning on doing at least Maybe not weekly, but a few more of these ones during the off season. Keep the conversation going. Interviews may not be too prevalent for the next month or two, but they will be back eventually. Hoping to hear from some Korongas um, and even some Cambodians. And we are hoping to do an episode, another Oslet show, talking about season 33 and season 34 of Survivor, because there's a lot of news there. Uh, not quite a cast assessment, but just a general chat. Uh, so stay tuned for that maybe being a thing. Uh, Ozcat for Korong, not happening in the m- immediate future, but it will be happening, and we may do another Korong Ozlet show just to wrap that up with some more of the Ozlet that we want to have a good uh, while you wait for the Ozcat. Uh, and yeah, let us know if you have any topics or you want to discuss about anything for uh, these Ozlet shows, and we'll maybe do another episode on it. I don't know. So it's been fun, Australian Survivor, late August, early September, we're thinking, uh, a lot of news, and I'm sure there's more to come out. So in the meantime, stay tuned for all our top 10 and all our uh, feature articles and any future episodes, and we'll speak to you next time on the trip. Goodbye.